Hello mortals. The planet you are inhabiting at the moment is the only one that allows you to walk naked on most of its surface without instantly turning you into a block of ice or a cloud of steam, while also not poisoning you with every breath you take. Surely you would expect that such intelligent creatures as humans would do all in their power to try and protect their only bastion separating their fragile bodies from the ruthless elements of the universe. Surely. Right. No. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. From the dawn of Homo sapiens, humanity has looked up to the stars. However, they were not seen as the gigantic cosmic objects similar to our sun that we know of today. For millennia, humans considered them something akin to little lamps suspended by strings and managed by the angels. It was only in the last two centuries that we have made significant progress in understanding our place in the universe. The ambitions for outwards expansion perhaps started with one of the first sci-fi movies ever from 1902, a trip to the moon, an anti-imperialist satire displaying a group of astronomers who travel to the moon in a cannon-propelled capsule, explore the surface, escape from an underground group of moon aliens after not vibing with them very well, and finally returning to Earth after capturing one. And now, after more than a century, we have realistic ambitions of colonizing the worlds that we previously barely knew anything about in the next couple of decades. So let us go through all our potential future home alternatives and see what the possibilities are, from left to right in our solar system. Seemingly one of the unlikeliest options for a space colony is Mercury. With surface temperatures of over 400 degrees Celsius and constant radiation or solar flare exposure, it sounds more like a doom simulator than humanity's next holiday resort. But it's actually these factors that make it an inviting destination. The volatile-rich surface makes it an ideal place to build solar sail spacecrafts, and the low gravity force allows for them to be easily electromagnetically catapulted into orbit. This would make Mercury a very efficient energy source, which can then be transported to other planets. Interestingly enough, because of almost no axial tilt, the crater floors near its poles lie in eternal darkness, never seeing the sun, making them a good place for mercurial bases, which can be used for the mining of minerals. Some elevation points even are at room temperature. Just don't go out walking around in your underwear as the radiation will make you into a spicy hot dog. The next planet on our list will instead make you into a squashed overburnt potato. We're of course talking about Venus. Its ultra-hot surface at 500 degrees Celsius which can melt lead, is covered by 50 kilometers of clouds, directing any colonization plans to the upper atmosphere into floaty balloons, instead of the surface. Thanks to its similar size to Earth, Venus has only a 10% weaker gravity, preventing problems such as bone decalcification and loss of muscle tone associated with low gravity. Venus being the closest planet to Earth, makes transportation considerably easier, allowing us to get there in five months using conventional propulsion systems. The heights at which our balloon houses would be floating would correspond to a manageable temperature of 75 degrees Celsius, while only 5 kilometers above, outside would feel just like a sunny day. The thick clouds would protect us from the sun's radiation, while the various elements in the atmosphere would let us perform agriculture. And maybe someday we could cool it down enough to terraform it, but that means no more balloon houses. Jumping over our most habitable planet in the universe, we land on the moon, the likeliest target for our first space colony. Due to the lack of an atmosphere and thus no radiation protection, and a gravity six times weaker than on Earth, the moon isn't very suitable for long-term big-scale colonies. Instead, it would best serve as an intermediate to the colonization of Mars. Since it has a much lower escape velocity, we would have an easier time launching stuff into space from there. So our likeliest bet is to build an industrial moon base used for spacecraft launches and refills. And now to Elon's big dream, Mars. No. Yes. On one hand you have days similar to Earth's in duration, only 40 minutes longer, and a slight atmosphere to protect from radiation. On the other hand you have a gravity force three times as weak as Earth's, and temperatures of minus 63 degrees Celsius. But these conditions can be found on Earth too. The polar regions reach similar temperatures, and the highest altitude reached by a balloon carrying humans in 1961 experienced similar pressure. Mars also seems like the easiest option to terraform at the moment, by nuking its poles obviously. There are multiple organizations preparing manned missions to Mars, the most prominent being NASA in 2030 and SpaceX in 2024 using their Starship rockets. 
Due to its relative proximity and acceptable conditions, Mars seems to be our likeliest target for a larger-scale space colony. And before we move on, since you enjoy learning about interstellar travel and the solar system, I can recommend the astrophysics course provided by our today's sponsor, Brilliant. Complete exciting and interactive lessons, learning everything from atomic spectra and the trigonometric parallax, to dark energy and the shape of the universe. If you've always been passionate about such topics but didn't know where to start, Brilliant will guide you while helping you learn through fun puzzles and active studying, making sure you develop your problem-solving skills in the process. But Brilliant isn't only limited to astronomy. There are plenty of interactive courses about math, computer science, quantum mechanics, and even an entirely overhauled logic course, with new challenges and a much higher level of interactivity than its predecessor. I also like to kickstart my circuits in the morning by solving the short everyday challenges. Head over to brilliant.org slash science file to sign up for free. The first 200 people that follow the link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. And before we get to the outer solar system, we have the asteroid belt left. It would be a great source of material mining and a good refueling checkpoint. Ceres, the largest asteroid, could serve as a hub for asteroid mining and as a stopover for resupply on journeys to the outer solar system. Manned missions to anything past the asteroid belt would be impractical with our current propulsion technologies. If a trip to Mars can take up to six months, one towards Jupiter would be at least 10 times as long, and it just gets worse the farther we go. A manned mission towards Neptune would currently take around 12 years, and that's not healthy in terms of microgravity and solar radiation exposure onto the crew. But once we have gotten our shit together as a species and started investing into science to come up with better spaceship designs, the next targets would not be the gas giant planets, but rather their moons. You see, it would be fairly complicated for us to build bases on Jupiter, Neptune, or Uranus, considering they don't have a solid surface, and their gravity being twice as strong than Earth's would drag our floating balloon houses down towards doom pretty fast. So we would probably aim towards Jupiter's Galilean moons first, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. They all have a gravity comparable to the moons, however radiation levels on Io and Europa are extreme, enough to kill unshielded humans within an Earth day. But with enough radiation shielding, Europa would make for an interesting research base, as it is rich in water and probably oxygen, harboring large underwater oceans with possibly microbial life. Callisto orbits outside Jupiter's radiation belt, that's why NASA chose it as a target for the future exploration of the outer solar system. It could be used as a refueling base for further exploration. Out of the left transjovian moons we are only left with one option, Saturn's moon, Titan. It is the only moon in the solar system to have a dense atmosphere which is rich in carbon-bearing compounds. It also has water and methane oceans, possessing an abundance of all the elements necessary to support life, making Titan perhaps the most advantageous locale in the outer solar system for colonization. Saturn's radiation belt is much weaker than Jupiter's, so radiation is less of an issue here. And obviously, Pluto, we might not build a space colony on your surface, but we might stick a flag saying that you'll always remain a true planet in our hearts, regardless of what those lame scientists have decided. So let's make this future journey of ours a reality, achievable only if we don't nuke ourselves before that or irreversibly destroy the environment, or accidentally wake up the slumbering one. You get the point.